doing it, Cindy, and I am here today. Welcome back to Studio Lou. I'm here with my, I think, first update since I posted the original kind of plans for January video. Um, I wanted to share a little bit of an update as well as my holiday haul of um, things that I got um, that will come in handy for this project. So this is my first update on the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery um, hosted by um, Roxy creations um, Rachel and Roxy's creations by Sarah so I'm really excited to get started on this project so my first um, video on this I had mentioned that I was using an old pillowcase it was a white pillowcase and I was using an old children's book so I cut the pillowcase down to like the top sort of a little over a third maybe um, and I have now inserted the book inside of it and I've stitched it on with blanket stitch. Hopefully you can see here. I um, turned up both edges and stitched it closed with blanket stitch. Then this was extremely white, so it was kind of bothering me. <laughs> so I took the whole thing after getting the stitching mostly done and I gave it a little tea bath to just kind of like give it a nicer, more kind of vintage feeling color and, and I'm really happy with that. This is more sort of the grungy or more my style than like a bright white. So that being said, um, I think the cover is done now. I'm, I, I wasn't sure, but I've, I've added a few more running stitches and things in it and I'm actually quite happy with it. I think it's finished. So that's the cover. Um, and then this is the, how the spine will fold over. So this will be the front with this beautiful vintage, um, bit of embroidery here and this will be the back with the mushrooms so I'm really happy with that now I added some stitches here to tighten along the seam here and also I left this little flap because that's going to allow the book to grow and if I do want to stitch a closure on here to hold it closed if it gets chunky then I can do that um, I, I didn't stitch it tight on this side I just left it because I want a little bit of leeway like you'll see it's a little wrinkly here so I will be tightening that up and stitching it all really nice and taut once I I do a few more things. So once I've got um, an idea of like how many pages will be in here, how thick this is going to be, etc. So I will come back to that. So I'll show you what else I've been up to. <clears throat> so I've started to work on a title page. Um, it is on these pieces of fabric here. You won't you won't see this white one. This is just for my backing. I just wanted a little extra fabric there to kind of give me a bit of a backing. Um, so I was really inspired by, I think everyone has been very inspired by Sarah and her beautiful um, title page. So I decided to kind of use the same sort of layout and that it was going to be sort of circular with a bit of leafiness and have journal of stitchery in my own handwriting. So I did that, I added some flowers. It's not finished. It's it's nowhere near finished. Um, next color I'm going to be working with will be this and I'm not even sure yet what I want to do but this is what's coming. So what I'm imagining is that depending on where this project goes when we get more instructions in January this may actually be what I put on the inside front cover um, like as a backing and I put some kind of nice fabric behind it like maybe a navy blue or something to just frame it well and then we'll find out what I want to put on the back um yeah I may actually cover the whole inside with another fabric too totally not sure yet this project is going to take a lot of twists and turns I think so then where am I with the sampler <laughs> So I've finished the first, um, I'm, I'm doing my sampler on two pages. That's just how it sort of worked out. Um, <clears throat> and I'm happy with how it's coming along. This one is in the hoop. I'll take it out to show it to you. I have a little bit more turkey work to go. I've done one turkey work flower here. Um, so this is the second set of stitches so I think I did a few of the like this isn't just the 1 to 10 I think I probably put 11 and 12 on here too um and then and then continued on a second page um and then decided that like maybe here is where I would just kind of play with whatever I wanted to um one thing happened that I didn't expect and it was that I really fell in love with doing doing the boolean stitch or boolean knot stitch 
You know what I think it was? I was watching a few different videos because I wanted to get a perspective on how different people do this stitch and, you know, see if there was kind of a tip other than just, you know, keep your loops loose. Like, what makes it hard and how do I kind of hack that? So what it was for me um, is, let me see, do I have a needle handy? I do. So <clears throat> if you imagine that, you know, the gap that you have is... Let me bring this up here. So just remember that all the wraps that you do, they only have to be as long as this gap. And then when I thought more about that, I was like, you know, that's not that many wraps, really. It's not. And then just honestly, take your time, you know, and do wrap them loosely, the loops, and then, you know, do ensure that you kind of hold on to everything and, and you're stitching in a comfortable space, maybe on a flat table. I found actually worked really well for me just sitting here and doing my stitching rather than, you know, being on the couch where the kids or the dog could jump on me and make me like mess things up. So <clears throat> I started with just these yellow bullions, just a normal bullion stitch across. Then I was so into it that I decided to do these roses. And so I really like how they turned out. I used um, a loops and threads um, s um, s floss. I couldn't think of the word. Oh my goodness. A loops and threads floss, I believe. Oh no, sorry. That's a DMC. That's the DMC red and pink. Um, like, you know, that package you can get of all their different multicolor flosses. There's sort of two different ones. There's like bright tones and dark tones. This is the brighter tones. And so I really like how it came out. Um, totally happy with it. Then I did some couching. I used a beautiful green Erin yarn and then some of my own hand spun yarn that has um, some silk um, organza fabric spun into it. So there's a lot going on in this one. And then I took some nice hand dyed wool boucle. Then of course the blanket stitch down here. And then I started to play with weaving stitches. So I've done three different kinds of weaving stitches, kind of the basic grid with some little couched cross hatches to just hold it down. Then I did this um, sort of more traditional like filling weaving stitch with these two blue leaves. And then I did this fun one, which is just you create two stitches for each of these petals and then you're going to go through them around and around and then what you end up with is this flower and then of course I've got my turkey work here um <clears throat> turkey work is always just such a a messy kind of thing to me it, it makes me feel a little bit like um it's hard to it's hard to like make it look nice or something but I'm happy with this but like little tiny things about turkey work bother me like one little thread that gets out of place like this teeny little one that's covering my black seam because it's just going or my black uh, center because it's just going the wrong way yeah it's making me a little bit <laughs> obsessed but anyways I have another little turkey work project that I think I'm going to try out here um, with some uh, fishbone um, stitch leaves and stuff so I'm going to try to do that right here and then I'm not sure what I want to do over here or how much space this whole thing will take up but once I get that done I think that will be the sampler so that is my my stitchery update and I'm feeling like I'm in a good position for January like I'll be ready to kind of you know when we get the instructions to start the first block I think I'll be ready to go so I'm already loving this I think it's going to be a lot of really pretty pages and I'm going to feel quite accomplished I think when I get this you know along more and on the way so all of that being said let me set all this aside so that I can show you my husband, his generous gift to me for um, the holidays. <clears throat> so, um, if you followed me for a while, or maybe you, you, you didn't, you're just finding me for this. I also do a lot of um, eco dyeing and a lot of other things outside of stitching. So, I'm a huge fan of this website called Maiwa. Um, they're a Canadian Vancouver-based company um, that they provide beautiful fabrics um, as well as a lot of natural materials for dyeing. I mean, tons beyond what I'm talking about right now. But he got me some beautiful logwood chips for doing some dyeing. Logwood is beautiful. It, it makes like a purple tone when you use it. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited to use this. I I sort of 
have a lot of natural dye materials and I've ordered from my one many times but this is one of those like you spoil yourself a little when you buy this because it is quite pricey so that was a very nice gift <laughs> Um, and then he also bought me some yardage of organic cotton and it is so beautiful. Um, I admittedly he bought me some of this already for my birthday. He bought me linen so this time he got me some beautiful cotton and um, this is uh, like the amazing kind of cards and, and booklets that you get with your order that talk about their products and like all of that and I love their um their salvage like my what organic cotton it's so pretty so yeah he got me this cotton I don't know what I will allow myself to use it for I'm still hoarding all of the linen that he bought me for my birthday because I'll probably get into it this summer um or like spring when the when the snow is gone and the plants are back and we can do some eco printing and then he also got me these so these are off cuts of all of their incredible fabrics so every time I check their site I never ever find them for whatever reason he always finds them and so this is linen with just this beautiful edge like they they're just all of their fabric off cuts so like when they you know when they package up orders and they have to cut them this is what's left over so in this case he got this beautiful double red um, threaded you know salvage on linen that's just woven beautifully so these make really nice like small um, like test projects for your your dyeing or you know stitching whatever you like to do but for me the real excitement comes with um, eco dyeing fabric so he also got these which are their dyed fabric off cuts and I haven't opened it yet but it looks like there's kind of a little selection here so this it feels kind of like um almost like denim and it's got this, I don't know if you can see the different navies. This looks almost like it's come out of an indigo pot. Um, it was the stuff that got left over like the longest in the indigo. Um, I do a lot of indigo dyeing, so I'm very familiar with this. And then this obviously would be the other indigo dyed fabric that didn't get in there as long. And then we have this red this has a Maiwa tag on it. Um, organic cotton, naturally dyed and block printed. Ashkara, um, sorry, Ashrock textile. Okay. So yeah, this lovely deep red, just beautiful. And then this darker purple, this honestly looks like it could be dyed with logwood. Um, and, and it's got a lot of nice streaking in it on the back. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about these offcuts. They're so great for little projects and things. Probably will use some of it in this project and then some nice edges too, which these could make beautiful closures for a journal. So yeah, I'm really stoked to have these bits and bobs. I'm always trying to get them. I never manage to, but my husband is just, I don't know, lucky or stealthy or something to always be able to get these for me. Um, those away and then I'll show you the last thing that he got me which is an exciting thing and also kind of funny so he was talking about how you know I'm kind of like a bag lady I'm always lugging around all these bags of stitching and different things but mostly right now it's kind of stitching that I've been carrying around because I bring it in the car when we go places and so he got me this beautiful um Lodred stitching bag so it's like a, a bag it's a, like a knapsack and it opens at the top and inside we have this nice strap pockets four pockets here netted pocket here more pockets here so that will be really good and also it'll be nice because I can keep the large book that I'm using for um, the Roxy Journal of Stitchery in here so then on the front we have two pockets so this top one is kind of like a pencil case it would be very good for tools or you know your day-to-day -day things if you were carrying your wallet what have you and then the bottom pocket 
it's great if you're trying to organize flosses or needles or you know crochet hooks paint brushes what have you um, pencils you could put it all in here because it's got these nice elastic slots in these pockets so yeah and it's what I like about it is it's, it's actually quite like a thin profile it's not a huge bag I mean I may pack it until it's huge but hopefully not um, and then we have a nice back pocket here that's quite large that um you know would be good for quick access things if you were going on a trip and it has two small straps so if you wanted to hold it like a handheld bag or it has this long adjustable shoulder strap i think it's nice like low profile would be good for traveling if we ever are able to travel on a plane again it would be really nice for that it would sit in your lap nicely and i think if you flipped it over it could actually sit right on your lap and you could set your stitching on top um if you're a user of one of these wool mats, or in my case, I have a wool, like large pencil case, um, you know, you could set that right on top of it and have this nice sturdy stitching base. So yeah, I think like it's perfect. So I'm planning to actually just like pack all of this stuff in here. Um, because what I've been using is like this case that it's really not organized well, but that's okay. So yeah, I'm excited to use this. So I will probably just keep my book in here for right now um, and then begin to sort of reorganize myself. But that is my little catch up video on where I am with this project and I will be back with more videos. Um, in January, I'm going to be posting a series of storytelling, um, like basically like I'll be reading from a, a really lovely public domain story about winter and you'll see me doing some stitching if you want to listen along and just watch kind of a sped up video of me doing paper stuff and stitching stuff and hopefully it'll be just a relaxing time where you can just kind of sit and stitch along with me or you know if you're cleaning up in the kitchen just pop the video on and listen to the story but yeah I hope everyone is getting a really good start on their their journal of stitchery and I'm so excited to stitch along with you um I'm definitely following the hashtags journal of stitchery and Roxy's journal of stitchery on Instagram so I'll be checking out a lot of accounts you know and, and probably trying to connect with people there and see your beautiful work and I would love to you know follow one another and if you haven't yet subscribed to the YouTube channel here please do I um, do videos about lots of different things both paper and fiber arts and stitching and just different stuff so I have a lot of fun plans for the new year um, anyhow that's it for today thanks everyone bye for now